I am the perfect eye racer. Everything that I do, you should copy. Everything that I say, you should listen to it, frame it, put it on your wall, and study it for years to come. Here's eight things that I do that you shouldn't do. Number one is the thing that I get called out most on when I do videos of me driving anything, and that is, of course, my posture. I sit like a hunched over person for no reason except for how I set up my setup, and it's pretty bad. When you are racing, when you are setting up your sim rig, you really should be in a position that is both comfortable and ergonomic so that you can race for a long time without getting fatigued or growing any bad habits that might lead to pain down the line. Unfortunately, with the way that my desk is set up right now, my monitor is just too low. I know it's been this way, and it's been like this for a long time, and I am very lazy and haven't fixed it because I don't know. So don't be like me. When you make your setup, make sure that you have your eyes completely level with what you're looking at on your monitor so that you don't have to look down at it at all. And so that might lead to you having to hunch over. If you have a more relaxed, natural position like you would be in a real car, then that will help you have good posture. And sometimes it might actually take some forcing of yourself to do it too. Number two is what I consider to be a fairly bad driving habit that I have picked up over the years. And while I do mainly oval racing, I think this is a problem for everyone, not just oval, but all different types. And that is being over-reliant on your relative. Now in iRacing, you can have a relative bar that shows you if you're in the green or the red on your lap time even in cars that don't have this on their dash. So for oval racing, even though no NASCAR has this capability, you can have the relative bar and use it to your advantage. And I really over rely on it in my opinion. Just as we tell people to not have the driving line on because either you become too reliant on it or it's not very accurate in the first place, the same can be said if you use the relative bar incorrectly. The way that I currently am very tied to it is specifically in corner entry speed. My eyes are a lot of the time glued on my relative bar to make sure that I have the perfect amount of speed to enter the corner to make sure that my car can do what I want it to do. But this is both a blessing and a curse because even if my speed is perfect, because I am so focused on that relative bar instead of the actual track, it makes it a lot more easy for me to miss my mark or to make some other type of mistake on the most important part of the corner. What's even worse is that when I turn the relative bar off, I automatically get slower because I no longer have that tool to rely on for my corner entry speed. Another way where the relative bar isn't as helpful as you would think is during long runs. When the tires are falling off, each lap is going to be different than the last. So what is the relative bar helping you by showing you even your last lap? Well, I've kind of tuned my brain in a way to guesstimate how much off I should be from my relative from the previous lap and it works most of the time. But what happens too, is that if I mess up once, I'm kind of out to lunch because if I mess up and my relative bar is showing a messed up lap, I suddenly have no good tool to go after for that corner entry speed I'm looking for. Number three is pretty much my entire brand, but I don't think it's particularly helping me become a better driver. And that is racing pretty much only in one series. With everything going on, YouTube, real life stuff, I've been doing a lot less racing this year. And when I have, about 90% of these races have been in the ARCA series this year. And why is that? Well, I find ARCA the most fun. That's why I'm the ARCA farmer. It's fun being very fast. It's fun liking the car a lot. I really dislike cautions, even though I know it's part of the game. But in a series where there's no cautions and I can save tires and do my long runs and be guaranteed for that, I love the ARCA series. But if my goal for 2024 was to become an all around better driver, maybe make pro series, I would be completely failing that right now because I'm only driving the ARCA car. Maybe I'm getting better at the ARCA car. Arguably, I'm not getting better at it anymore. But even then, I think that even if my I rating is higher, I don't think that my skills have really gone up much in this past year because of only running one series. One reason that this specialization is not helping me become a better driver is because I'm not being exposed to all different types of technique and ideas while driving. And we'll go over a couple of them later that I'm not very good at, but basically what I want to lead off on that is with the ARCA car, the majority of the time it's going to be handling fairly neutral or tight on corner exit. And because of that, you don't have to be as easy on the throttle. You can do a lot of bullying on the throttle and the tires are fine with it for the most part and the car is fine with it for the most part. And I like that style of driving, but it leads to some weaknesses, which we will lead into now. 
Numbers four and five go hand in hand together, so I'm just gonna group them together right here. Number four is not being smooth enough coming off the throttle, and number five is not being smooth enough coming onto the throttle. And this isn't just for the Arca car, this is for all oval cars. A lot of my students are shocked by how jagged my inputs can be when we compare telemetry. Now, some of it is on the steering end, and I don't think it's too much of an issue on that end, but it's more of an issue on the throttle pedal specifically. My brake is pretty good. I tend to run my pedals as light as they possibly can be. One, because they're not mounted to the floor, so if they're too heavy, they'll tilt up. And the other reason is because I'm just used to the Logitech G920 pedals that I used for years. But one of the things that this is not good for is my smoothness on throttle and having that control over it. It's obviously still possible, but if I'm not using my brain really hard, I can be very jagged on the throttle inputs. I've talked about this a couple times in videos already, but one thing that a lot of people overlook heavily is how important it is to be smooth off your throttle in most NASCAR tracks as you are landing into the corner because it just helps your car set and doesn't have any really weird weight being thrown around from being all off the throttle at once. Well, even though I say that, a lot of the times I don't do it. Maybe because of muscle memory, maybe because I just don't think of it in the moment but I miss out on a lot of potential rotation and some tire wear by being very jagged on my off throttle motion. Sometimes I do a little cheat too. I'll go 100% straight to 50% straight to 0% so that there's not really any smoothness, but because I make a stop halfway through, it does kind of the job, but it's still not great. And then tying that to the next thing, getting smooth back on the throttle, this is pretty much what I struggle the most with. I do the same thing. I'm very good at going from zero and finding that 50, 60, 70% that you need to roll the corner, but that motion's not very smooth. And a lot of the times that doesn't hurt me, especially in Arca. In a car like Arca, going from zero to 60% instantly hurts pretty much nothing. But in a car like in a loose Xfinity setup or maybe the cup car, if you go too quickly from zero to 60, it'll kick out your right rear tire in a way that your Arca car with the lower horsepower never could. The same goes from that 60% up to the 100% as you're trying to throttle off the corner. I'm a little bit better on that because you straight up have to be. Sometimes you can only be smooth or else you're gonna spin out, but I have to really think about it in order to do it. It's not part of my natural muscle memory like I wish that it could be, and it's something that I personally want to work on and that I recommend to you guys. I'm gonna leave my most controversial one for last, so for the next two, I'm gonna go over behaviors that I have surrounding entering the race itself. Number six is that I pretty much only practice qualifying and hot lap before a race. I know most people do this and I do it too, but honestly, I don't recommend it for people who are trying to maximize their finishing position in the majority of races. Sure, there'll be some tracks where track position is so king that you really wanna qualify as good as you can, but at the end of the day, you will probably improve your driving if you take 20 minutes of practicing one hot lap and gaining maybe half a tenth or a tenth out of it, and you switch that into figuring out a long run for that race and seeing what behaviors the cars are so that you're more prepared for the actual race itself. The reason I don't do this is because sometimes I think that because I have raced at these tracks so many times that I already understand what I need to do, but that has caught me out a lot of times. In fact, I can think of recently I ran an ARCA race at a mile and a half track and I just went out and burned my tires way too much, way more than I thought I did, and I went from the lead and I fell back and back and back, I think like fourth place or something like that, which is completely out of character for me. But if I had done one mock run where I would do a long run for maybe 20 laps, I would have noticed the things that I was doing wrong in that mock run and be ready for the race. Even not taking into account the finishing position of the race that you do, your actual driving ability will go up so much more over time if you practice more long runs than hot laps. And the next thing that I pretty much never did until very, very recently that you should be doing for every race too is reviewing the replays after your race. I pretty much always just completely quit out of my races instantly, no matter where I finished. If I won, I'd say GG's and leave. If I lost, I'd be kind of mad that I lost and instantly leave without looking at anything. But that's just the wrong attitude. If you lose a race especially, you should be looking for what other people did that beat you because it's literally just information that's out there for free of people being better than you and giving you information and telling you what they're doing with their car or what to be looking for that is ultimately better than what you're doing right now. 
I never did this until I started up a segment with my channel members where I basically just review each race that I do and post it up there. What that's done for me is I have actually seen with my own eyes, wow, I'm really doing this wrong compared to them. I need to be aiming for this. One example here is for Concord. I lost a, a Concord race to a guy who is a lot faster than me and watching the race review, I'm like, okay, I know that he's entering these corners wider than me and I know I'm scared to do it, but I should just be aiming to do it. The next race I go out and do it against the same guy, I lost, but I only lost by like a tenth of a second or something. It was very close, whereas I was like seven seconds behind him in the previous race. So what I'm thinking is that by me learning from my own replays, that should be showing you guys that there is a lot to learn in all your replays too. And finally, for my most controversial take of things that I do that you shouldn't be doing, actively thinking about saving tires. I know, that goes against everything that I talk about on my channel, right? But honestly, for the majority of people watching right now, you are probably under a 2000 I rating level. And in my opinion, for a large portion of people under about 2000 I rating, you should not be thinking about saving tires yet. If you are consistently about three tenths of a second off of my times for any track, you probably need to focus more on what line you are taking and your approach to the corner before even thinking about what it means to save tires in that situation. I've noticed a lot of people in the middle and bottom splits really hamper their potential by simply just going too slow in an effort to save their tires throughout the race. Just because you end on the best tires at the end of the race doesn't mean that you did the best job tire saving. Because if you gave up 12 or 20 seconds on the front end of the run to gain about five of it back at the end of it, did you really save your tires the best or did you just end on the best tires? My goal with a lot of what I teach is for people to realize if their approach to the racing line is correct, it will naturally save an amount of tire that will keep you competitive even if you're burning a little bit too much tire in the moment. It's a lot easier to find the fast racing line and then find from there how to save tires in that context than it is to start out with the best tires in the world and then have to try to find the racing line from there. And I know this one isn't really about something that I do wrong, but it's been something that I've been thinking about for a while and I've been seeing people do, and I thought it would be good to bring it up here. But let me know in the comments what bad habits you guys have seen from yourself and maybe other drivers in iRacing. And other than that, thank you all for watching. Hope you all have a wonderful day. I hope to see you all on the track.